right there, Bagginses and Buffins. Welcome back, everyone. Today we are talking about the return of the king needing one more ending. Uh, I have never heard someone say it needs more endings. I <laughs> think it has the perfect number, but many people have told me it needs less endings. Uh, so, uh, where, first of all, where do you stand on this? Uh, well, I mean, they, I mean, you can tell from the title they want to add the scouring of the Shire. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, which we'll get into, yeah. but in terms of just the movies by themselves without any knowledge of the books, if you can try to try to force that into your mind, what's what's your take on the ending of, of the movie? Oh, that's controversial. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think it works with the number of endings, although there are people who think it's they're they're done with it they're they're now getting bored with all these endings uh, yeah i can see why maybe you'd want to move it along a little quicker yeah so for me i actually i i really enjoy the endings because i i think after all that stuff that we've that we've been doing i, I think i think of all the movies the the lord of the rings trilogy deserves endings uh that are appropriate for every single character and really you know, bringing it all back to the start, which was just how Peter tried to tried to wrap it up, basically. Right, um, I agree. You need I I I, I can see every ending is essential. But so I like obviously, for example, um, you know, having having Frodo wake up once again, um, in, in a bed, <laughs> having been yeah. knocked out. Maybe you don't need that. I think you do. I think that I. I really like. I don't normally like this. In, in well, in then movies. you get to see everyone like happy. Exactly. To see I like you roll get... call. I like the roll call in that in that scene because you hadn't. They hadn't been together. Sure, so... it's like traditional theater. That's a good point. Yeah, and everyone gets up and does their bow. It, exactly. I. I to me, it doesn't work for every movie, um, but I really liked it, and uh, I think it it actually is needed to bring closure to certain characters. Uh, who haven't seen each other for two movies now, um, yeah. and then you have basically a lot of a lot of kind of stuff. Uh, people call it fluff in in the Shire once they go back there, and everything is kind of you know everything's nice and happy. And yeah, then... I like seeing Sam get the girl. Yeah, nice. yeah, I I like seeing the characters come back, ha having had their adventure and having new world and lived experiences. To be to come back and try to try to fit back into that humble lifestyle, uh, I think is important because that was such a huge crux of when they first set out on their journey. they the 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 fact that they were so naive and and uh, and just not knowledgeable about the wider world. Although obviously in the books Frodo has a bit more information uh, going forward, but in, in the movie. He is basically out of the loop. Sam is completely naive. He has no idea what's going on. And same as Mary and Pippin. And the fact that that they are then thrust into these situations, have to learn quickly and learn a lot of horrible lessons, and then they come back and they try to they try to reintegrate. I think that's also an important bit to the story, at least in terms of an ending. And so, I mean, which one are you gonna pick to skip? And then obviously having having frodo uh, spoilers having frodo leave um to go to the undying lands with the elves is a huge emotional tearjerker for me yes um and so which one of those do you cut because i i tell you this you're definitely not cutting the you bow to no one scene no right. way that is a must. No, you have. need that too. You need that too. That yeah, thing. Need, that thing gives you need, you need people to show chills. Ar you need to see Aragorn getting coronated. And... Right. You need to see him getting coronated, and you need to see him, basically, show and tell people that these these people deserve our respect. Yes. You know, no more of this. They're just stupid hobbits. Like these people, we owe them everything. And you bow to no one. It gives me chills just thinking about it. It gives a lot of fans chills. That is definitely in it in, in one of the endings. And so which ending are you cutting here? Exactly. I, I can't see how you cut any of these endings without losing a huge emotional beat that people will then argue, why is this not in it? This article 
<clears throat> you can tell I get these articles before I, I, I basically I tell you, hey, I've got an article. I don't even read it. And then we read it. And then I just get frustrated. <laughs> this article uh, wants to put in the <laughs> something from the books that wouldn't make any sense in the movie. It completely changes the theme of the movies. The, the movies are different from the books. They have some overlapping themes. Yes. But the scurrying, the scourging of the Shire is 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 completely out of left field for the movie. It's out of left field for the books, mind you. But in the movie, it wouldn't make any sense, especially in the extended versions where we see the villain die. <laughs> the villain died in the yeah yeah. So the fact that he's already dead, <laughs> it wouldn't make any. There would be no way to do this properly. You could, I guess, say that like some random goblin king or something basically drove everyone uh, drove the goblins into the shire and took over that way uh but for so real quick for people who don't know what we're talking about in the books saruman uh doesn't die uh the way he does in the movies he he basically heads up to hobbiton um after he is thwarted um by by gandalf and that is where he kind of encounters the hobbits again uh, as he wants they're... to try that halfling's leaf that... <laughs> yeah the one that's clouded the one that's clouded Gandalf's mind <laughs> but yeah so he goes there and he he basically um using the same powers he used in in Rohan he he tries to corrupt the hobbits and he and he's successful until until our four heroes get there now mind you the also the reason this wouldn't work is because Gandalf leaves um, at this crucial time. He goes to talk to Tom Bombadil. He goes to right? talk to Tom Bombadil, who, if you then throw him in the last <laughs> bit, that is that. You know what? Fans who are yelling about Tom Bombadil, okay, I am. I am sorry you don't get Tom Bombadil in the movies. I think he would ruin the movies a little bit. But I am sorry because I know some people really like Tom. He does seem like a fun character. He just he kind of breaks the the themes and stuff but would people leave us in the, in the comments down below would you like to see tom just thrown in at the last bit like they're heading back to to hobbiton and then gandalf goes oh i've got to go meet up with my friend tom is, is that enough for for you people to to be okay is that as much tom as you need or do you need to see tom like battling things like i don't know but to me that would be weird and wouldn't work especially for the themes of the movie the themes I mean, yes, we can talk about the fact that they could go have him talk to like Treebeard instead or something. I don't know. Oh, I see, because because Treebeard gets his lines, so yeah, you can have yeah. Treebeard kind of be the the go between there. That is true, although because Treebeard does say that that he needs to talk to Gandalf. I think in the movies, um, at some point. But the the, the point is, it, it it would kind of wreck the significance of the true, um burden that they were that they were on because as this article points out someone who's in favor of it says it's actually kind of like a mini novel at the end and he, they they explain that it that it's required well not required but he he believes or, or she I, I don't know who actually wrote this article but they believe that the reason that it's good in the books is because it shows that stories don't just end on a on a high note all the time and even when they do end on a high note stuff comes after that's not always that's not always super happy and that's already covered in the ending when frodo leaves so i i don't understand why you think you need to add this random stuff in just to make it a little bit more conflict when we already have frodo from Sam and Mary and Pippin's perspective, Frodo abandoning them, right? They they do they do understand. They they do come to understand. But in that moment, when you're first told that Frodo's leaving, like that is really sad. And those actors are really crying. And and so are we in the in the audience. <laughs> we don't need these silly like if you read the books, there are some silly battles that are going on with these hobbits. Like it's just silly. Now. At this point in time, real quick, I like I don't know I don't know how much I want to get into this, but Marion Pippin 
have grown significantly in size at this point. So they are like these mm-hmm. massive hobbits at this point. And they can basically take on a whole host of hobbits by themselves. And so you get these really ridiculous visuals of these of these larger hobbits fighting smaller hobbits and, and fighting other humans. And it's just, it, it, it becomes kind of silly and crazy. And then you do get a little a little confrontation with Saruman um, and, and Wormtongue. And it's just... It, it it's all it kind of feels like the hobbit books the hobbit book. right it just but feels it a does, little bit it does show that they can that the four of them they've like they're able to do this thing without gandalf's help which is which is why tolkien had gandalf leave he had to come up with yeah. a reason for him to leave and he was like oh tom is the perfect excuse because tom is this force that is not quite described yet so gandalf has to go talk to tom the hobbits now have to manage on their own. But we've actually already seen them do this in the movies. We have seen Merry and Pippin both do stuff on their own um, for the betterment of the Fellowship. Well, at this point, it's not a Fellowship, but but basically are, are, are instrumental in leading to certain situations um, in, in their respective uh, areas and, and um, conflicts. And as for Sam... I honestly don't understand why we think we need Sam to to kind of show his worth. It's clear. Any meme you see that has Sam in it, the meme is usually who is the main hero of the story or or what is the most powerful member of the fellowship or something like that. And then it's a picture of Samwise Gamgee. So it's already clear how how well respected Sam is by the end of this. The scurrying of the Shire really doesn't do anything for me in the books and it would ruin a perfect amount of endings in i mean imagine having all those endings and then in between frodo waking up and frodo leaving instead of them going back to the shire and integrating it's another mini battle scene with a bunch of little hobbits imagine that that's ridiculous i'm sorry it's straight up ridiculous you can like it in the books it would be nonsense to throw it in here i i i i do not understand how anyone would want another silly battle scene like literally silly it's a silly scene in the books it, it is made it is written silly and it, it would look silly yeah to throw that in at the end of a of an epic trilogy just to stay true to the books or just to show that stories don't always end on a high note i to me that is not the point of the movies which are different from the books but also the points that are made with the the scurrying of the shire are already made in the in the scenes leading up to the endings. We already have all of this information about how useful and important these hobbits are. The you bow to no one scene is enough for me to understand, well, for anyone, I think, is to understand that these hobbits are important and we've seen them do important things. Everyone from 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 Mary um, going into battle to, to Pippin really stepping up and taking responsibility for his actions, which is a huge character arc that we haven't even talked about on this channel yet about Pippin. Sam, I don't even need to talk about Sam. We know that Sam is the main character. And then Frodo does get uh, often shafted in this regard. But the fact that he was holding the ring so close to Ringwraiths and to Orcs and to Mount Doom and and fighting it pretty effectively obviously spoilers again but he doesn't he doesn't go 100 percent all the way um still the fact that he was able to get it all that way is a testament to how strong-willed he is so i really don't think we need to see these hobbits do it on their own i think they've been doing it this whole time and i i just think i think really what this was about is a bit about about kind of making it that just because you've gone off and done this great adventure um, doesn't mean you're always going to come back to the exact same lifestyle. Things change, and I get that, but but we're going to get that change with Frodo leaving anyway. So to me, that's enough, and I really, I really can't stress how silly the scene is in the books and just trying to em- envision it in, in a movie format. I, I mean, what do you think? Like, I, I just cannot see a battle like that doing anything no no than it, laugh. It, it, do, it doesn't fit it just doesn't fit <clears throat> it's um 
And see, yeah. I, even this article talks about Aragorn potentially being the main character. I mean, there's many main characters in this in this trilogy. Like all, all nine are basically main. Like you could even throw Boromir in as a main character. He has got the the biggest arc in the first movie. So, you know, I I don't think you need to really pinpoint. Oh, the four hobbits are who we really want to talk about, and then show them doing their own thing. They've done it. Uh, you know, just trust in the the yep. story. I guess it's just a question of like, and you can argue it's good or bad, but the they come back to the Shire, and no one there has any idea what's happened. It seems mm. like it's literally the, the the Shire was completely unaffected by the war. They didn't even know what happened. <laughs> right. I think. I think. And, and I'm actually at that point in the article too where it talks about that at the end of the day Lord of the Rings is a war story we all know that it was written um, right around the time of, of World War II and it's and it's basically a thematic telling of that um, and the point of the scurrying also shows that war affects everyone something that um, Mary uh, tells Treebeard that you know you're part of this world and you kind of need to take a side. Um, this war is coming to you, whether you like it or not. We see Aragorn say that uh, to the to the king of Rohan. I, I agree with that. I think maybe you could have have some recognition from these guys. Uh, like maybe there were some orc raids there. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I, I'm just it just doesn't to, fit. I'm trying to envision how the battle would go without making it seem either redundant or silly. Because we do see a version of this of the scurrying of this of the Shire when, um, when he looks into the Galadriel. Yes, uh, yeah. So we no. do see a scene that they shot like that. However, that's not what we would see if we were following Frodo. Frodo doesn't see that part. Frodo comes back with Mary, Pippin, and Sam, and that's already happened. And so now you've got Saruman, who is mind controlling some of these hobbits who are ruling this land. There's a couple of humans there. Um, but that's the extent of it. And then, and then Mary and Pippin, they become like these like little mini generals gathering up different hobbits that are willing to fight. And they have this little battle and it's kind of silly. They, we wouldn't get a battle of orcs attacking hobbits, which would just be a massacre. That's not, cause that's not in the books either. Like it's just implied that that happened. But what's, what's, what we would see is the aftermath, which would be a little bit more like like Gandalf going into Rohan and trying to um, free the mind of the king. It, to me, that's just, it's uh, different. It's, it's not going to work for this movie. It would be a neat little side movie, potentially, or a side, um, like, mini-series, if you will, but uh, it to me the, the all the main points other than the fact that the shire is unscathed which doesn't make sense i agree other than that fact all the other points are, do you think are uh, Sar saruman's death in the book and green warrington's death in the book or i mean in the movie is better than the book yes okay. i do because you have theoden kind of having talking to group. I don't know why Theoden likes that guy so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe Green next time don't hire, don't hire a guy named Wormtongue to be your chief advisor. <laughs> and it sounds like, oh, I wanted, I still want him to be my chief advisor. <laughs> Come down. <laughs> you were a man of Rohan once. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I I think they do. It's, it's a nice homage to the books because it, it does happen similarly in the books, except instead of the hobbits dealing with it. Um, we get to see Theoden and Gandalf and all of them deal with it and and basically have the same effect. But to me, it, it actually works better that way. To, to, have, to have Theoden there talking to Wormtongue and having, having Wormtongue ultimately make the betrayal there. And I actually think it works better from those characters' points of view than, than having them having Wormtongue be completely Why, devoid of that point. Wormtongue followed him all the way to the, the Hobbiton before yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to have Theoden be there, I think that's actually a stronger point for for Theo, for Theoden and for Wormtongue. It's a stronger character moment with them together than to have than to basically show that Wormtongue has become Yeah, like Fro- Frodo's never met these people. <laughs> no, that's right. Frodo has no idea who this is. Mary and Pippin do. Um but yeah, it's it's kind of it's I think it it's it misses uh, a mark and and the fact that that they don't kill these characters um for their for their actions uh earlier in the in the in the books it's kind of weird also how but it was weird that Aragorn let him go it it's weird that Aragorn weird. lets him go in the movie but it's also weird that they were able to escape uh in the books because all of a sudden they they just escape through like an underground tunnel or something like that and the, and yeah you're it's right like, so they get past tree beard and all yeah the... they get past the trees and the there are some other people guarding guarding it and it's just it's kind of weird that they that they escape and they make it all the way by themselves to hobbiton mind you cuz um just out of spite it's some of these hobbits screwed me over so yeah go it, it, it's such a yeah he goes there because he hates the hobbits he but he he really should be hating Gandalf. Now maybe he's trying to get back at Gandalf because of the hobbits. Either way, I, I think it's a much better moment to have the final battle happen in his little fortress with Theoden present. I think and Gandalf present. I, I think it's just a much better confrontation there. Um, I actually, if you want the sc- the scoring of the Shire, just have a a random villain that like a random goblin lord or leader like yeah do it. You don't need to have this weird little magic he set up, especially when it's already established that he loses his magic, and yet he's still able oh. to do a few like curses and whatnot. So I don't know. It, it it's a bit forced, and that's why I it I don't really think it works in the books the way they do it, and I the way he does it, and I don't really think it would work at all in the movies. So yeah, I I was hoping for like another sappy ending, but this article wants to throw in some silly battle scene. Um, <laughs> Like I, you know, we have some good battle scenes. We don't need to to wreck it with something like this. That's my take. I regret to announce this is the end. I bid you all a very fond farewell. Goodbye. My friends. <laughs>